Competing at the highest level in college athletics takes a great deal of courage. One of our presenters tonight is a very familiar face to all of you, but there's something you may not know about him. He was, he was known courage from a very early age. He, along with his mother, his father, and his sister, sailed into New York Harbor when he was five years old. They were immigrants from Germany, and he was unable to speak a word of English. And at that point, he and his family each were issued $14 and a train ticket that eventually led him to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That was quite a welcome to the new world, and it certainly took a big dose of courage. To present our inaugural Courage Award, please welcome a four-time Emmy Award winner from WSMV Channel 4, Rudy Kalis, along with the President and CEO of the United Way of Rutherford County and Cannon County, along with the President of the BRAA. Bring on Brian Hercules and Rudy Kalis. Uh, student athletes face adversity every day, whether it's in the classroom, it's in practice, or it's in a game. We certainly see it all the time, but it's always a challenge to overcome, and uh, it's, uh, it's a difficult one. To, at times, it's a life and death situation. We want to honor one Blue Raider football player that had that occurrence in the spring of 2011. It was just typical play. I mean, you know, we're scrimmaging, and they, uh, they go to... Shane caught the ball on the outside and they went to tackle him and uh, you know it, Shane went down and I gave him a minute to see if he got up and didn't get up so I went over check on him uh, obviously you know most of the time when someone gets the wind knocked out of them they're going to recover pretty quickly but he wasn't recovering like that he kept having left upper quadrant pain which is uh, typically where we see uh, was where the spleen's located at and where they'll have a complaint of pain at them took his blood pressure again, his blood pressure had dropped. Um, so it was at that time that we, uh, we decided that we needed to send him. Everything was just like, went so fast to the hospital, I, I kind of, it was all a blur. Next thing I know, I'm waking up and I'm on the hospital bed. Got like 40 some staples down my stomach. He basically had a whole body full of blood replaced in him. It was serious to the standpoint that I don't think I expressed to people during the process how I think I bore that burden on myself instead of letting everyone else know how serious it was. Your mind is racing and also each phone call thereafter got worse and worse, the news. You know, he ended up having a, a pneumothorax, which is, you know, uh, where the uh, breathing cavity collapses. They were trying to get him stable. And at some point, there was even talk about life flighting him to Vanderbilt. The grace of God put all those fine doctors in the same location at the same time. You know, he spent like uh, five days in, in critical care, and, uh, and and he was so out of it for for those for those uh, days, and so it never was discussed. But the, the moment that Shane was able to to kind of uh, carry on a conversation, the first thing he asked was, "Will I be able to play again?" When we got ready to start preseason football, I asked him. I said. All right, what do you want me to do for you to protect you up a little bit? He said, I don't want anything. I said, you don't want any rib pads? No, I don't want rib pads. I said, well, you want me to get you a special shirt made that's got some padding in it over that area? No, nope, I don't want that either. He said, I don't want anything. He said, I just want to go out and play football. I've always respected Shane as a person and as a player because of how hard he worked and everything he did. And then throw the seriousness of this injury on top of it, my respect level went up another level for him because uh, not many people would have, would have been able to come back from this injury, and then not many people would have wanted to. If, if he wanted to do, do it, then uh, he had our support. Uh, if the doctors okayed it and released him, then he, he, had, he had my support, that's for sure. He never screamed, he never yelled, he never cried. Um, I think that he's a tough individual.
The Raider Choice Award for Courage goes to Shane Blizzard. Shane's situation was indeed life and death. The final outcome could have been much different had it not been for one very special member of the sports medicine, sports medicine staff that day. At the time, you were just trying to process the information as it came through and, um, and trusting that he was in, in, in good hands, and, uh, and he was. Trust is, is definitely there with the players and the trainers because, I mean, they they pretty much have your your athletic ability. You know, if, if you get hurt, it's in their hands. If it's an ACL, uh, if it's a you know, an ankle sprain, something we see more regularly, you know, we have more of a protocol set. Something like this is totally uh, a different situation. Robbie. Uh, has had experience in this area before. He's, he's seen this before. Um, and he just knew how to react to this uh, in a very calm fashion, uh, uh, in a timely fashion, uh, did everything right. Um, if he would have decided to make a different choice in one way or another, it could have, it could have cost his life. I thought Robbie and his staff did an excellent job of reacting and responding to the seriousness of, of Shane's injury as quick as they did and getting him the attention, the immediate attention that he got. Robbie has a gift and, and he may, you know, and people may not see that day in and day out, but you know, it's not just treating them in the training room and sending them on the way. I mean, he really um, gets to know them because I mentioned Shane's a tough guy and he is. By Robbie knowing that about Shane, he knew something wasn't right. Uh, you know, whether he got the wind knocked out of him or whether he cracked a rib or whatever, he knew that something was not right. And so he, he kept monitoring him and watching his body language. And, uh, and that's when it, when it, that's when Robbie went into action and, and he saved his life. There's a proverb. It's one of my favorites is, uh, a man plans his way in life, but it's the Lord who directs his steps. God intended for Robbie to be there, and that's why uh, this wonderful miracle happened. And so for that, a special award, a special Raider Award to Robbie Stewart. You know, throughout this whole process, this is something I'll live over in my mind uh, for, for the rest of my life. Uh, but like it was said, uh, you know, God was on, on Shane's side that day. Um, he was the one that saved him. And uh, I just, you know, it just wasn't me. It was, it was my whole staff, uh, you know, uh, Brett, a.k.a. Biggie. Uh, he... Uh, <laughs> You know, he played the role, and uh, once we decided to send Shane, you know, he played the role in getting him to the hospital in a, in a very timely manner. And, uh, you know, just the hospital staff and all that, as soon as they got there, we were able to make some phone calls and tell them what we expect or suspected. And, uh, and everything uh, went as according to plan from that point. So um, everything, was, everything was just in place that day, and it, it all worked like it was supposed to. So. Thank you.